In shows like CSI, Miami, New York, wherever, they often throw out the term DNA fingerprinting. One of the most common methods of DNA fingerprinting is something called PCR. And what it's all about is using PCR and gel electrophoresis to examine DNA. That's what they mean by DNA fingerprinting. It's not really somebody's fingerprint. Now, PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction, which is a process for copying DNA. And what it does is it uses a special heat-stable DNA polymerase to copy a specific gene that you're interested in. Now, uh, gel electrophoresis is this idea of using the fact that DNA is negatively charged to take your copied DNA, put it into the um, agarose gel or some other materials, and then use electricity to drive that charged DNA through the gel. And because that gel acts like an obstacle course, it separates out the DNA fragments based on their size. Let's take a closer look at this uh, YouTube video that shows the process known as PCR. And we're inside of a test tube filled with DNA from uh, a suspect, if we're in CSI. But all we're interested in is this one particular uh, section of DNA called the target sequence highlighted in green. Now, this is going, going to take advantage of some of the steps involved in DNA replication, the process of copying DNA. Now, normally with DNA replication, you have to open up the helix. Well, to open that up in your cells, you use an enzyme. In this test tube, we're going to heat it up to 95 degrees Celsius, which will separate the two sides, because that's almost boiling temperature. Now, we cool it a little bit and allow a pre-made thing called a primer that tells which gene we're interested to, um, in copying to come in. And so by cooling it to right around 60-odd degrees or so, um, that allows the primer to bind to our target sequence. Now, the orange little things is that enzyme that can survive these high temperatures. And these green guys with sticks on them, those are the nucleotides, the raw material for building our DNA copy. So the enzyme does what it's supposed to do. It finds the primer and says, OK, and it starts copying. And it keeps going. And if you give it enough time, it'll finish copying the entire molecule going this way, and that one will copy it going that way. Remember, the two strands of DNA are anti-parallel. They go in opposite directions but we only give it maybe two minutes at most. And so at that point, we then let it stop, and we're at the end of uh, cycle one. And so now that we're done with cycle one, we can begin cycle two, and it's the exact same thing. We heat it up to 95 degrees Celsius, which is enough to separate our old, original template strands and our newly made copies. We cool it to 60 degrees Celsius. That is cool enough for the primers that still are floating around in the test tube to bind to the beginning and end portions of our gene of interest. Then we get it to the right temperature for the enzyme, the DNA polymerase. It finds the primer, goes OK, and it starts a copying. And that's the end of cycle two. At this point, we have four copies. Now, they, each of our copies contains information that's not part of our DNA. But at the beginning of cycle three, when we heat it up, notice there's a couple of short little segments that are only the length of our uh, gene of interest. We cool it, primers stick, the TAC polymerase comes along and binds it. Oh, it's called TAC polymerase. That's short for Thermophilus aquiensis, which is just as the name of the creature came from. But now we have a couple of our target molecules made. So we're ready to begin. I believe this is cycle four. So again, we're going to heat it up. That's the end of cycle three. So we heat it up for cycle four. We separate our strands. We cool it enough for the primers to come on in. They bind to the beginning and end portions of our DNA gene. TAC polymerase does its copying job. And again, we've made a number of copies of just the size that we want. Now, originally we had more of these longer ones, but now we're starting to get more and more of the shorter ones. As we begin cycle five, we do the exact same thing over and over. That's why it's called a chain reaction. Each time we're doubling the number of our copies. And we just run it through. And this is such a simple process. This is one of the reasons why this, when it was first invented, people were going, wow, how do you think of this? And there's a lot of uh, apocryphal stories about how the guy actually did think about it. But he's now a very rich man because everybody does this process. Now you can see we've got 22 molecules, and that's after only five cycles. Each cycle takes maybe 90 seconds to a couple minutes. So you do this 30 times, that takes you maybe 90, min 90 minutes. And at the end of it, you've got hmm, 
a large number, billions of copies of your target. Now, you can't see an individual molecule, but you can see billions of molecules. Now, how are we going to visualize this? How are we going to see how big that is? That's where the gel electrophoresis comes in. So we'll stop the YouTube video and we'll go to a PowerPoint slide and let's imagine we've done a DNA fingerprint of uh, three people and we're looking to see, um, we're not using this to identify who they are like you would in CSI, but we're doing this to try to figure out what genes do they have. Let's suppose we found a gene that if you have a longer version of it, you're more likely to get a particular cancer. If you have a short version of it, you're less likely to get a particular cancer. Well, we have patient one, patient two, and patient three. Now, in this fourth row here, what we have is pre-made DNA so that we can use it like a ruler. And what we do is we loaded our DNA samples into these holes here called wells. We turn on the current. This end is negatively charged. This end is positively charged. DNA has a negative charge to it. So it is repelled by the negative side and goes zoom towards the positive end. And little guys, 1,000 base pairs long, move a lot faster than the big uh, 10,000 base pair long pieces of DNA. Now this person here, we only see one band. This person here, we see one band. This person, we see, hmm, two. Why is that? Oh yeah, everybody has two copies of every gene. This person has two copies of the long version. They're homozygous uh, for this particular condition. This person here is homozygous for not for the short version, i.e. not having the cancer. This person here is heterozygous. So this person has a medium chance, per, this person has a low chance, this person with a double dose of the longer, more, uh, greater chance of having cancer gene, this person's at greater risk. And this is one of the uses of DNA fingerprinting is to assess your genetic risks so that you can make wise, intelligent decisions about what are you gonna do in your environment. If this is you, I would not smoke and watch your diet and do everything else you can to keep this genetic prediction from becoming a genetic reality.